So back to the Harlequin build. Um, as you can see, it's complete. We've got all of the sock all the chips socketed, all of the connectors in place. So we've got power, composite, RGB I assume, ear and mic. I've got the Z80, Mega My chip, two RAM chips, load of logic chips and one socket that's empty, which is where our ROM's going to go. Um, most of the chips are socketed with the exception of one actually on this before I go on any further with regards to blowing EPROMs. Underneath the AY there is a logic chip which has to be soldered on the board, which was a little bit fiddly but fits quite nicely. You have to take the bar out of the um, socket in order to fit the chip inside. It's quite a tidy fit, quite a neat solution. Um, again, fortunately, Bike Delight had removed the bar on the socket already, so very, very thoughtful, really, to be honest, this kit, the way it's been prepared. Very, very impressed. If you are thinking about buying one of these, um, you can't be bothered ordering the parts separately or do not have the parts to hand, I highly recommend Bike Delight. Again, I'm not affiliated with Bike Delight, and I'm not doing this for sponsorship. I actually paid for this board. But to be perfectly honest, if I was going to build another one of these, I'd probably order straight from there again. So I have a TL86II Plus programmer here, TL866II Plus, which can program a variety of devices, um, EEPROMs and EEPROMs alike, and also other devices through this port here, which I've not investigated yet. There it is. Um, I think that's for like programming app mills and things like that. System on chips. So I have an EEPROM that bought off eBay. Bought from Little Diode again. Not affiliated with Little Diode. It was just the first shop that came up on eBay. Let's open this up. Find out what's inside. I already know what's inside. I've already opened this up. So that's an EEPROM. So that should fit quite nicely in that socket. But first we've got to put some data on it, which is where this comes in. So I'm going to show some, share some screenshots while I'm doing this. Um, so you have to bear with me. It comes with software, you can download off the internet. It's fairly good. Uh, a little bit um, missing in translation in places, but I think on the whole it's very, very clear and it does what it says in the tin. Um, first we need to select a device. Um, I've already selected a device here. So the device name is usually printed on the top. I don't know if we can make that out. But it is. Do the right way around, it helps. An AM29F040B120PC EEPROM. Which I've selected. If I click on here, it gives me the device info, which also includes how to um, insert it into the socket which we're going to do right now. So let's take it out of the protective phone. And it says that pin zero needs to be aligned to the top left. So pin zero is where the dot is or the notch. So I'm going to just insert it like so. Pop down the lever on the zero force insertion socket. And let's just do a quick check. First things first, let's load a 48k ROM into bank zero. This chip actually has eight banks of 64k. So it's possible to, actually, to load um, eight different ROM sets. And because each bank's 64k, I believe I can load plus three ROM sets, which uh, span four banks of 16k. The ROMs that you program up in the EEPROM are selectable here on this dip switch. So currently these are all off. 
so it's selecting bank zero. Uh, the only other thing to bear in mind is that there are two jumpers to select the ROM type, which is the, uh, what do I call it again? The 9, 9FO4 9 to EEPROM. So the first dip switch is here, it needs to be up at the top. Where has it gone? There we go. Second dip switch is nestled down here, which is a bit confusing, because um, you normally expect dip switches to be close to the function, but in this case it wasn't. Right, so I'm just going to pause the video a minute whilst I load up these ROMs. Okay, so I've got the ROMs ro ROM files loaded in the EEPROM programmer now. So the next step is to program it. So go to um, device and program. Uh, again, it verifies the location in the socket. Click the program button. Yellow light lights up indicates it's doing something. I'm getting a progress bar. It's erasing the chip. Programming and verifying. Pop open that. Lift the chip out. Let's give it a new home. So, I think the pins need bending a little bit. So, I'm going to just. I've got a chip straightener. Do it the old school way. Got to be careful putting chips in here. I have bent many and lost many a pin. I'm going to do it on the table here, it's a bit more solid. That was looking pretty straight. Let's just bend these now. Talk amongst yourselves. There we go, that'll do. So just make sure I'm plugging it in the right way. Finger at the top, notch at the top. Dot indicates pin one, and they do require a little bit of force. These sockets they come a bit of cropper with the Z80 yesterday evening, bending the pins trying to get it out. It's pretty hidden wrong. So, I'm going to be a little bit more careful with this one. Double check everything's lined up, looks okay to me, and it's in. Now, that is finished. The proof now is in the pudding. Will it actually fire up? So I have a cable I've made up. I'm not going to chance my um, Spectrum power supply on it just yet. So I'm going to use my trusty lab power supply, which is off screen here. Dial it up to nine volts. I have this handy cable. Now I never throw anything away. So this cable was from a, I think it was from a GPRS or a 3G modem that we used in the last job, and we have, we've got hundreds of these. So I've just spliced the end off, tinned the wires, marked out um, which pin is positive, because on the Spectrum it seems to be the opposite of most other devices. Now I'm just going to check the bike the bike documentation. In fact, I'll show you my multimeter. I think it's the opposite of most devices, so I'll just plug that there and stick it on continuity check. So, okay, now the middle is the negative pin, and the positive, the outer sheaf. So, it was actually the opposite way around to the way this is wired. Um, so, I've taken the uh, connectors that are on here, which wouldn't fit on my power supply anyway, and just marked with a bit of paper, a bit of tape, red ink on, which is the positive pin, just so I don't forget later. So I'm going to use that to power it up. And that, as they say, is that. Uh, the next video will be the show and tell. Will it power up?